In the introduction to his apostolic exhortation, Amoris Laetitia, Pope Francis writes this, it is likely that couples will identify more with chapters four and five. In fact, where chapter four focused on considerations of conjugal love in itself, chapter five presents the Pope's reflection on the broader theme of family life. It is worth remembering that during the year between the preparatory synodal assembly of 2014 and the general assembly of 2015, Pope Francis devoted a series of Wednesday audiences to the theme of the family. Throughout this fifth chapter, we find echoes of the remarks that he made to the pilgrims on St. Peter's Square in Rome. But he begins this chapter by quoting St. John Paul II. The latter, like Pope Francis, had decided to convene the first synod out of his papacy on the theme of the family. And the fruit of that synod was his apostolic exhortation, Familiaris Consortium. It is from number 14 of that text that Francis draws the first paragraph of this fifth chapter, and I quote, Love always gives life. Conjugal love does not end with a couple. The couple, in giving themselves to one another, give not just themselves, but also the reality of children who are living reflections of their love a permanent sign of their conjugal unity, and a living and inseparable synthesis of their being as father and mother. So we pass from conjugal love in chapter 4 to family life in chapter 5. Pope Francis begins his reflection at the very beginning, that is to say with the discovery of a new pregnancy, then begins the task of welcoming the child who is to come into the world. As the Pope explains, pregnancy is a difficult but wonderful time. A mother joins with God to bring forth the miracle of a new life. To the pregnant woman, the Pope extends this beautiful inv invitation. Keep happy and let nothing rob you of the interior joy of motherhood. Your child deserves your happiness. Obviously, it is not only the mother who is concerned by this event, the father is intimately linked to this project. The Pope takes the opportunity to recall that the child has the right to be raised by both parents, and that the presence of both father and mother in the life of the child is fundamental for its development. On the other hand, he does not forget that many couples cannot experience the joy of generating a new life. He recognizes the suffering of these couples, invites them not only to consider the possibility of adopting a child, but also to engage as a couple in the construction of a more just world. Indeed, a couple's fruitfulness must transcend mere procreation. It must leave its trace in the world. It is in this context that the Pope quotes a beautiful poem by the Uruguayan poet Mario Benedetti. Let me find it. Your hands are my caress, my daily reminders. I love you because your hands work for justice. If I love you, it's because you are my love, my accomplice, and my everything. And in the street, arm in arm, we are more than two. The Pope adds, a married couple who experiences the power of love knows that this love is called to bind the wounds of the outcast, to foster a culture of encounter, and to fight for justice. In other words, the family's mission is not only about its own members, but about the world around it. This mission ex is expressed in a double commitment for justice and for evangelization. As the Pope says, by their witness, as well as their words, families speak to others Jesus. They pass on the faith. They arouse a desire for God, and they reflect the beauty of the gospel and its way of life. For Pope Francis, the family transcends the nucleus of the couple and their children. He recalls that parents themselves are someone else's children, and that they must maintain vital links with their own parents. This virtuous link between the generations is a guarantee of a truly human history. 
obviously it is necessary to maintain the proper balance between the intimacy of the couple and their affection and care for their elderly parents. Yet these can play a most important role in the lives of their grandchildren. The Pope also recall, recalls that parents have brothers and sisters with whom ties can deepen over time. He writes this, Growing up with brothers and sisters makes for a beautiful experience of caring and of helping one another. He goes further suggesting that the extended family make room for those who are injured in their family life. Teenage mothers, parentless children, single women who have to educate their own children, youth struggling with addiction, singles, separated persons, widows, widowers, not to mention fathers and mothers-in-law and other members of the spouse's family. Coming to the end of the chapter, we see that the Pope's vision of the family is far removed from the nuclear family of the 20th century, closed in on its autonomy and independence. He sees the family as a vital cell in society, a school of fraternal, civic, and ecclesial life. His perspective is broad, and the title of this fifth chapter, Love Becoming Fruitful, takes on a meaning that transcends the simple generation of children. He invites us to see in the birth of a son or a daughter a sacrament of life that love ushers in wherever it passes. In conclusion, I invite all people of goodwill to read this fifth chapter of Amoris Laetitia. It helps us see our own families in a new way.